the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works steady to show thyself a prudent to god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling this great word of truth dear brethren in the grace of our lord to the praise of the glory of jehovah through his son through the church or here on this earth under the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit being under mentor over him we need to be grateful and thankful to our lord that one more day being has been renewed upon us so that what it was yesterday is no longer considered to our account in the physical realm of our life but today one more day freshly bestowed upon us so that being not using the grace of lord in vain but rather seeking searching and learning the things pertaining to Christ the day by day renovation of our mind it could be to the praise of his glory and this is what it could be a great lesson that you and i can learn dear brother this great lesson as many people think why and what for they are surviving on this earth they can never know many people can't even understand why it is that our lord god almighty has given for us such kind of a great honor and radically renewed as according to his image so that we could be absolutely worthy enough to the praise of his glory scripture stands written and told several times our lord himself has told it is sent for the sinners not for the one who is good and every man is a sinner and doctor has been required for those who are weak who are sick but not to the one who is better off likewise we the believers of the church age the written epistles for our exhortation for our reproof for our correction for our instruction is that we are in this hospital called as bible and in this hospital every believer have to become perfect and good and complete in the sight and the knowledge of god so that the lord's mind our christ's savior truth his grace his righteousness and to holiness could be reflected as we walk and several passages in the bible including the first corinthians or second or in fact even indeed the basic instructions given by peter or paul or apostle they move on to tell now that we are no longer the members of slaves of sinners we are no longer the members of uncleanliness moving from iniquity unto iniquity but rather we are now the members of christ and we are the servants of righteousness now we need to move unto holiness and for that the flesh will war against the newly indwelling spirit as we believe in the lord and savior jesus christ as our savior at the moment of it by the baptism of lord god the holy spirit being saved being entered into one great unique family under the baptism of it not that many people teach that they have to follow this methods then they are going to get the baptism of the holy spirit they have taken only water baptism now they need to take the holy spirit baptism all these things are sheer out of a lie at the moment of salvation by faith alone in christ alone every believer has been given the greatest privilege of all time never happened in the history never will happen again in the future neither in the past nor in the future but only in the present every believer being united into the great royal family of god by the baptism of lord god the holy spirit instantaneously if you are an unbeliever and now you believe in the lord and savior jesus christ by telling to lord god the father that you believe upon him that is the moment itself you have been baptized with lord god the holy spirit not only being baptized you are being sealed you are being controlled and you have been even given one spiritual gift minimum one spiritual gift as a token of love to you and many people don't want to learn this doctrine they want to learn 
If it is a baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, they have to gibberishly jump around, dance around, and talk in tongues, which is not at all the tongues which they are talking today. It is a sheer out of a blasphemy by Satan using their vocal cords, controlling them with the Angastamutas Diman and trying to blaspheme my Lord. But do you know what the hard heartened, stiff necked pastor teacher or believers, including in the realm of Pentecostal crowds, are practicing? Though we tell them it is a demand that is controlling your vocal cords, they say it is the praise that we are giving. It is the only language between we and God. Only God and me can understand. That's what they claim out. Christianity has suffered over in the past from the day of the Protestant freedom in 1566 or 1533. Emerging out to come out with great and true doctrines, the popery has been the number one cause wherewith the doctrine has not come into picture. The mind of Christ has not been taught from 1566 AD till to the point of 1972. Or 19, 1978. Exactly 422 years, the popery in the Catholicism form of doctrine in each and every country, including US, UK, everywhere. Rather than making them to memorize the Bible, they want to memorize them with the catechism of their own interpretation given by thinking themselves the authority given by the, by the Pope of the Church. And they really suppressed this 422 years into great darkness. The greatest evil that could ever hit upon the mankind is not Satan. The greatest evil that could ever hit upon the mankind is the popery of this Christianity in this Christendom. Because our Lord has given great freedom to each and every believer that whosoever wants to learn this mind of Christ should know that it is of God. And if he has to know that it is of God, then he has to learn what is the will of God. The will of God is that none should perish, but everyone should come to the knowledge of truth. The will of God is that every believer should be perfect and complete and have that great peace, the peace which our Lord gives alone. And that great peace will not come until and unless there is a rich indwelling of the word of God in you, says Colossians 3.16. And there will be no great freedom for a believer until unless he really knows that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. A failure in the freedom, a failure in the peace. And do you know what? Satan may have its ingenious plans to succeed either strategically, tactically. But greater than all these things is our Lord. Romans 16.20 tells to us, you shall trample under your feet, Satan. Therefore, the greatest evil that could ever hit to the mankind is popery, Roman Catholicism. And there are many people who will not agree with me, I know that, I don't, and I don't care for that. If at all I am worried, I need to worry whether my Lord's word has been absolutely honored or not. My Lord's word has been given the great place or not. My Lord's thinking has been given right attitude or not. Not to worry about what people think of me, what people do not think of me, or what they call me. I seldom care. The reason why I call the greatest evil apart from Satan could be this Roman Catholicism to the Christians. Though we got in 1533 the reason of great freedom in us for Christ through Protestantism is that these long years they have really suppressed the word of Lord. There is no difference between the Roman Catholicism and the Mohammedanians if you can compare. The first point why I could say the great evil is this Roman Catholicism today in the popery of the pulpits, because the Pope, the Roman Catholicism considers the Pope is the vicar for Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but it cannot be and can never be. The sovereign executive for representing the Godhead is nothing but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was represented in the human form. He's been further vicar or really made known to this congregation by Lord God the Holy Spirit. And Lord God the Holy Spirit is the only vicar for Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, not the Pope, who is having all sin nature in him and thinks that he could be the vicar for Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
No human being can become infallible and inerrant. He will do sin. And if you can little dig out the history of this Roman Catholicism people, in the churches you will find small children tombs. The reason, illegal affairs with the nuns, and each priest or the one who will be called as a pope, or the one who will be in charge as a bishop, They have more than five to ten women as an illegal affairs. And they want to claim again, they want to be celibates. And this Pope, he can never be the vicar for Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The first point. The only vicar for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the sovereign executive, is none other but our Lord God, the Holy Spirit. He is the only vicar for Christ. He is the only vicar for Godhead. He is the only vicar for this mankind so that they can come to know the realization of the truth. And furthermore, the second point why the Roman Catholicism will be considered as great evil upon this mankind is the big fancy cathedrals. People think when they have the church membership regularly, that's enough for them to be saved in the Roman Catholicism. But the Protestantism thinks there is no membership at all required. If at all there is any membership, it has to be through the learning of doctrine. And as it has to be the learning of doctrine, they should write at least once the Bible. The third thing about the saints, Bible teaches to us, Every believer is a saint before the foundation of the world. God has chosen him and kept holy and blameless. But the Roman Catholicism want to tell, at the end of your life, depending upon you, you can get to be either a saint or not a saint. And sainthood and the saint certificate they want to give. And they want to proclaim that this sainthoodship is that they're praying for their prayers by other saints who respect those men who have been died. And they have the cathedral's name upon that. And they have the churches upon that. St. Patrick prayed for us. Patrick is not an apostle. St. Francis prayed for us. Francis is not an apostle. If at all they could learn what is the word of the Lord, they would know that they are praying for Lord God the Father through his only mediator, who is none other but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit, who is the sovereign executive of this Godhead. But they don't want to look upon this. And there is something which they want to practice known as holy water. As if they're going to be get cleansed when they consider this holy water. And we do not know what is that holy water, if at all they could get now. Sprinkling, maybe. Or causing them to become holy by drinking that water, or causing them to force to drink that water, we don't know. The purgatory which they want to teach, that after death, again, you have a chance to go to heaven by really following the process of purgatory or, or, or cleansing out. Which is nowhere written in the Bible to understand it. That's why we call it as an evil. In, in fact, even indeed, now the Protestant leaders who are being there in the churches, they want to look upon this and they want to say, yes, we also follow the same things of Roman Catholicism and there are some morons who want to tell and to promote this popery in the Christendom of these Protestant churches. If it could be, then the great one will be the celibacy in their test. When the Roman Catholic people came out to be celibates, not only for men, even for women, by becoming nuns, they have lost of a lot of a criminal and background report, which is even shame to speak of. It will be a great insult for Christianity, if at all Roman Catholics could consider they are Christians. And if in this world has been blinded, they will be blinded by the teachings of Roman Catholicism. And this blinding of the teaching of the Roman Catholicism has caused them to respect only Christians as to be Roman Catholics and not really to look upon Protestantism. And there are some of the pastors who want to come out, who want to teach, who want to tell. Including being in the realm of Protestantism, and they want to say Roman Catholic is right. Then let them become first the celibates. But they will not. In return, they are interested in pornography. 
In return, they are interested in the extramartial affairs. In return, they are interested in the return of this reality, even very sad to speak, to have affairs with the widows of the same congregation. And how come they can become the celibates? And how come they can become to promote the popery in our pulpits of Christianity today? Which is no way possible. Furthermore, the scriptures, which we, the church, the pastor teachers of the Protestantism, the end for all is the word of God. Beginning and the end is for all coming through the word of God. But for the Roman Catholicism, the great evil that has occurred to the mankind, they call tradition to be as equal to the scriptures and no rituals in this church age. The only ritual that has been given for us is the Lord's Supper in remembrance of Him. Not even baptism is a ritual. But the Roman Catholic have their own traditions and they say they really high, they have a great value and high value and high regard for those traditions in comparison to the scriptures. And they have their own Catholicism which is nothing but scripture which have to be made for the children who are coming up to the next generation taught with their parents when the parents could learn but they say no we have a set of rules and regulations which could be drained down into the brains of the children and we will follow that and we will make them to become catechism and this roman catholic people have their own traditional teachings either in us or uk or any other part of the world they have their own catechism started in fact even renewed in 2011 or 2006 or 2002 and they have one authoritary and this authoritary is nothing but that the churches should learn that only the roman catholic church has the authority to interpret the bible and they say no one can have apart from that to interpret the bible this is the great evil that has occurred among all the evils that we have been looted Point number one, it includes the authoritary, authority. This authoritary, the Bible teaches to us, it has to be by the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to a male believer in the congregation of the church who has been faithfully prepared to rightly divide the word of the Lord and who has gone through the isagogical, categorical, and exegetical expression of the word through the right and proper dispensing technique of dispensations. They don't want this. These people, they want to say, we have authority, and only the Roman Catholic Church has the doctrines, including the Cardinal A, Cardinal B members. They are having some secrets that what one of the modern pastor tells to me, being a Protestant, they have the secrets which they have not revealed, and they only should reveal what is this resurrection, what is this rapture, when will it happen, what is the resurrection body, and they want to tell this. They have only the secrets, as if Bible doesn't have anything. And in fact, even they, it was better for me not to listen from his mouth. In fact, even Bible has been the secret of them. What a shame upon these pastors who are really licking their asses. The asses of Roman Catholic teachings. Because the authority to open the scriptures and to read by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit through a male believer, so that now they can really understand what is exactly the word of the Lord, what is the plan for a believer, what is the mystery doctrine, what is the unique spiritual life. But they want to look this. You know what they want to end up? They want to end up in the morality, moral values, moral standards. And sometimes I think some of the pastors would really linger around to think. The Roman Catholicism doctrine would be great for us to understand. The Roman Catholicism practices will be great for us to know. But it's not possible, dear brethren. It's no way possible for us to know this. Until and unless you know that the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher by the head of the department of the church given to a male believer whose duty is to study day and night the word of the Lord and to rightly divide the word of the Lord, till then you can never come. 
It is not the Roman Catholic Church that has authority to interpret the Bible, but it has the person given to the pastor teacher who has that authority to give under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to teach to you as per the doctrine of God, the Father in heaven who has been given through his Son and now being revealed through Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And if the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, should train them up under the right pastor teacher who is a male believer so that the next generation can show forth and hold forth this word and they could be really happy to handle this word. But you know what? They don't want this. And they have some of the sacraments of the Roman Catholicism. The seven step sacraments. They include baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, penance, and anointing the sick. They have some holy orders and matrimony to be performed. But the Protestant teachers, by faith alone in Christ alone, through grace you are being saved. No sacraments, no rituals. And in the Roman Catholic, they have holy days, at least minimum 10 days. It is obligated for every Roman Catholic believer to follow it and to practice it. But Protestants are not so. And since in the Protestantism, there are no such kind of a holidays, wherewith the Roman Catholic wants to tell to the Lord, in a year, at least 10 days, I have come to your church. Like that scribe or a Pharisee who was going through on the road and he said, Lord, I'm not like that sinner, publican. See, I fast twice a week. I gave you tithes. So is this holidays. The Protestantism has given them the freedom because not for the thing that they should be distracted from their own, but for the reality of the word to tell. It is a free will of evolution whether they come to listen to the word of the Lord or not. It is left to them if they really have the fear and the love towards God, they will definitely come. And they come morning one hour, evening one hour to learn the word of the Lord because there is no serious mission on this earth. Then to see that each and every believer should be graduated in the word of the Lord and to be edified in the Bible doctrine and leave behind a great impact in this angelic conflict, a legendary impact in this angelic conflict. And for that, number one priority for doctrine, 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 no other method. Number one priority for more than anything else on this earth should go to learn the dig and to learn and to dig the word from isagogical, categorical, rectical expression of the word with the right dispensing technique of dispensations. There are no holidays, but every day is holy in sight of God so that you should be pure for Christ. And we have the last one, communion, which has always been a great debate. The Roman Catholics think blood and wine literally represent Christ. But here now we are using it as a figurative sense in the Protestantism. And as long as these people will never come out of these 12 standpoints of Roman Catholic evil upon Christianity, they will never come to know what is the importance of Bible, what is the importance of the Vicar of Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Vicar is nothing but Lord God the Holy Spirit. What is the importance of saving us? What is the importance of being with Christ for us? They will never come to know. It is very sad and pathetic for us to note and tell to you again and again the things that ought to be for Christ are not for Christ. That's why the Roman Catholicism dominated till to the 15th century. The Martin Luther Zwingli Calvin who came out now having freedom in our hands to hold Bible and to interpret and to study under the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit from a right pastor teacher so that we could be growing up. That's what we can learn. The first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. At least this generation of people rather indulging yourself into one of these forms of Roman Catholicism teachings over legalism or religion-minded things, it would be better for you all to correct yourself and get back to the reality of the word and give importance to faith. Faith and the unity of the knowledge which we have to come in the bond of peace. Dear brother, and think over these issues as we shall continue in the next tape. Father, grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will us all these things and make it so a blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.